go do the other side. So we're testing where we want the shocks because we don't know exactly where it's going to be the softest. We want this to be ultra soft, like if big bones, gravy bones gets on it, I want it to almost max it out, you know, like to be super soft with me because it's for a cheering. Alright, moment of truth. I mean, it might be. Too soft. Too great to be coming here. Great save! Yeah. 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 I mean, that's about perfect for a kid. Oh, uh, yeah, you're stabbing. Up. Well, yeah, I gotta cut that shock bracket off. Yeah. I do think it's a little soft. I think those are factory mini bike shocks or something off of MB200. Uh, so we got this swing arm, we welded out the shock tabs. I had to build these little extension buoys to hold the shock offset, you know, off of the frame because the CVT pulley's right here and the pull starts right here, so it was really close. Uh, so we got all that done. And that first place we put shocks, we was trying MB200 shocks off of the, like the stock ones. We pulled those off and put Go Power Sports 150cc front shocks in their place and it was completely like perfect. Couldn't ask for a better shock feel. So we took this quarter inch flat stock and drilled some holes. So basically we're gonna weld this to the back of the chassis there and we bent a 45 and a 90 in a piece. You can't see the 90, it's up under here. But now we can weld this in place and that gives us our two brake caliper mounts. And uh, we have our, if you tighten this nut on 150 rear brake calipers, it'll push the piston into the rotor so it won't move and it'll hold it in place for you. We can still use the original e-brake that's on the Eton Rover and the original brake line. We'll just have to bleed everything out. Forward, shock forward, shock forward. So the Eton Rover is married to the swing arm. Down to here, down to here, down. There it is. Oh, okay. Oh, I can see. There. Perfect. She is installed. So, like I said earlier, we was using MB200 stock shocks that's a go power sports full suspension mini bike we had a pair of their original shocks and they was just too weak these are 150 front shocks for like a gy6 150 go-kart from go power sports and they're like perfect for grayson and lonnie's weight take that off and demonstrate unfortunately your boy gravy bones is too fat for it but, but yeah that feels really good so now we can tighten up everything. We've got our chain tension, our motor's bolted down. We put that voltage regulator from the last video mounted on a Go Power Sports throttle plate. We're not using this as a throttle plate, but it's super handy to mount different like relays and stuff to. It's really handy. So now I'm waiting on a bunch of wiring stuff to come in. You can see my main harness that's coming back, but I can't do nothing with it because I'm waiting for my fuse box and a bunch of other junk. So uh, we're really close to, we've got to do the exhaust next. All right, so the whole wiring on this thing is done. We end up using the Eton Rover's factory ignition, which is pretty sweet. We put on all kinds of super nice waterproof connectors. We have a tack uh, input here. And what's cool is this factory, this like clamshells like this, and it had a factory spot for a tack. Like if you see the back has this little, like this will be perfect for a voltage gauge, which we'll be installing one later as I don't have one here. And then they had this like same cutout for this size tack. So I don't know if these come with a speedometer or what. So I'll set there. So we had to cut this section of the frame out to fit this tack because the back of it was hitting right there and we added this support down here. That's Miss Redbeard's welds, look at that. Woo! So now we're ready to, you can set that down on the floorboard. Uh, we can put the front end on. You can see I got the whole wiring set up in the front end. So take this. Yeah, you can feed it out and you can feed the yes, worms through. Go ahead and do this one. Got it. 
Now, look at these little baby headlights I found. Cuter than a button. <laughs> it kind of looks dumb, but I like it. <laughs> it seems like it would have fit bigger, but it wouldn't. Okay, I'm trying to get all these wires hooked up. Bada boom, bada bang. Bippity boppity boop, Bob's uncle. And then these other wires are just relay signal wires and stuff. We can get them all buttoned up. We don't have a battery hold down yet. This is a pretty fancy schmancy setup. You got one on here. Oh, yeah, I did go to Harvard Law. <laughs> <laughs> What's that have to do with anything? You'll see when I sue you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. You went to Harvard Law? That's very impressive. I was the top of my class. Well, it's cool is this fuse box when these LEDs are lit up means you have a blown fuse. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. More you know. Oh, Dale. <laughs> it's gone forever. Okay. Good. Tack's working. And it's lit up. There's the headlights. This will be for the light bar so the headlights work. Plug. So next is uh, exhaust. Yeah. Mount the shifter. Yeah. Bleed the brakes. Yeah. And then it's ready to run. Shoe ready. Ha. Come. On. Yeah. Throttle hooked up. Yeah. Throttle's hooked up. We got the choke. We adapted the original choke so he has a choke on the dash. That's sick. You'll be able to choke it from right there. Mm-hmm. And uh, might need a self tapper in that. I was just saying that. <laughs> Come on, man. I forget. Uh, but yeah, imagine being, going back in time to you being Grayson's age and having this on this property to play with. Well, that'd be crazy. That'd be, that'd that'd be, be wild. That'd be wild. It's like the other day, it was uh, snowing and the first thing, it was a proud papa moment. First thing my daughter said when she woke up was like, do I got gas in my go-kart? <laughs> well, if you don't, I'll fill her up. Let's go. <laughs> So we're ready to mount the shifter for the reverse rear end that Go Power Sport sells, the gearbox. So we took this piece of quarter inch, one and a quarter wide flat stock, and we did a 90 and a 45 degree bend. So what we can do, and we drilled the holes um, that's behind this plate and mounted that to it. So we took this piece of flat stock, we're gonna set it in there and weld that in right there. Then this will set like that and weld to it. And then we'll show you how it'll come through the plastic. So first we'll get this packed on real quick. So here's the, the back plastic. It sits down there like so. And the shifter will sit in there just like that. So now you can probably move it up some. All right, now we have a shifter. We got drive, reverse, nothing's tightened up on it. So when we put this plastic on, we had this used to be the battery box, but it only held a tiny little battery. So I had Lonnie cut that out. Now we'll be able to take and cut a notch in the lid to the little slide over and still screw down and hide all this. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Just have a slip for the, the shifter throw. to move. Yeah. Later. So on the Eton Rover, I'm telling you guys, it's been headache after headache. I don't know why this thing had so many problems and it was so new when we got it. Probably sitting out in the weather. Uh, but the O-ring on the master cylinder was bad. So we had to pull the whole entire front end off of it after getting it all put back on because it's located behind all that. Uh, and what do you know, it doesn't match any other master cylinder we normally use. It was uh, specific for this Rover, so we had to order that. That was $110 for a little master cylinder. That sucked, uh, but the we got that fixed. So we're gonna try to rebuild the old one, but I didn't wanna have to worry about you know a problem occurring and Grace and I having break, so I wanted to put something brand new on it. 
Um, then we went and after we got the fuel tank put on, the petcock started leaking like crazy and I just filled the tank up. So I had to pull the back plastics off, pull the petcock and I was able to rebuild the petcock. There's just a couple O-rings in there and uh, replaced all those, got that done. Then, uh, so a Tilson 212 has a different valve cover than a Hemi Predator or a non-Hemi Predator. Uh, this little, you know, valve cover right here. So I took a valve cover off this engine and TIG welded a one inch, or sorry, a half inch tube nipple on the side of it to put a breather. Cause these, you know, the, the hose just kind of shoves in the side of them and I don't like that. So I wanted a barb on it. Well, when I drilled that hole out a little bit bigger, so it flow more, my drill bit went inside the valve cover and dented it. I'm talking a fraction of an inch. Well, that tiny dent uh, made it to where it was cracking open the intake valve. So when I went to first start this thing, after getting the pet cock and all that junk fixed, um, it wouldn't start. And I was like, what in the world? It seemed like it was out of time. Well, I ended up finding out by using some, I think it's called docking uh, fluid, like they use it for machining parts to see like clearances and stuff. Uh, stuff is handy to have, by the way. It's on screen now. Um, but we use that to paint the inside of the valve cover, put it back on, rotate the engine around. And I'm talking, guys, it was hitting by thousands of an inch. It was crazy how little was cracking that valve open. So I just took a punch and dented it back in. And so now she runs good. So we get all that done and we're about ready to ride it. And we find out both front calipers are stuck. This was the problem when we pulled it in, but I thought it was the rear caliper. Uh, it was a front caliper, so they're seasoned out. So I'm gonna tell you how we fixed it using parts off of Go Power Sports uh, 150 front brakes, and we kind of used both brakes to fix everything. So I'll show you how we fix the problem. Okay, so this uh, Eton Rover's been a little bit of a headache. Everything that we didn't replace needed replaced. Uh, so we already done the master cylinder. We didn't show it on camera, but now we have to do the brakes. The front calipers are locked up and so we're gonna show you how we're gonna fix this problem. So if you notice, I cannot turn this and the brakes are fully bled and everything. It's just this piston will not release. So instead of messing with this caliper, we're gonna remove the caliper and put a new one on. This is a Go Power Sports 150 caliper. This is on like 90% of 150s if you have front brakes. Of course, knowing my luck, this bolt pattern is different than this flange here, it's wider and longer. No, it's the same width, it's just down here more. So we're gonna pull this caliper off real quick. I'm gonna use a 12 and break this puppy loose. Just got two bolts, just like a car caliper would. And of course the back caliper is good because we already replaced it, uh, you know, when we built the new swing arm. So, if we pry this thing off here, you can see that they're the same distance apart, but when we line them up, you can see how much different height it is. So at first I was like, son of a gun, because this had a brake master cylinder that was on no other go-kart, like no one off the shelf will work. So I was gonna have to order specific brake caliper for this. Well, you can actually pull these apart so we're still able to use the Go Power Sports 150 front caliper, and which is awesome because these are handy to keep on the shelf. If you mess with go-karts a lot, these are the best calipers used on the front of them. Easy to mount and they're cheap. So what we're gonna do is push this black piece all the way back so we can pull off this front pad. Once you pull off the front pad, pop out the rear pop out these clips and if you have extra of these don't throw them away they're handy to keep so now if we just pull that black bracket comes off now we got our new caliper ready let's take off this brake line we're probably going to spill some fluid use a 12 on it as well make sure to leave your cap on your reservoir also when you're doing this so it won't you know allow gravity to bleed out your brake line so you'll have less to to bleed when you're done so we're going to do the same exact thing with this one. I'm going to push this black piece all the way back. And these use the same pads and everything as a normal 150. Uh, so we can keep those for spare. The pads aren't bad. But we're going to be using the new ones off the Go Power Sports brakes. We're going to keep these clips as well. Like I said, they're handy to keep those. And we just pop that right off. Now I can throw this caliper away 
Uh, well, actually, I'm going to steal the bleeder off of it. I like to keep all these parts off this stuff. So we have our new Go Power Sports caliper and our old bracket. So this, and if you push it real fast, you see how that one clicked back on. This one did not, but that rubber boot just keeps dust out of that little piston, the little piston arm. Sometimes it's hard to get both of them to snap on. This is the way the other side was. I've already done the other side by the way. Put that metal clip back in there. Get it behind the piston. Now we can put the small pad in. Like so. Put the new outer pad. You hook one side. Rotate it in. This sometimes is a pretty tight fit. Okay, so now our new caliper is installed. And you always want your brake bleeder at the highest point so gravity can do its job and let the air bubbles out. We used to not know that back in the day because we was a rub, 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 rub morons. Mm -hmm. And we'll just slide that back on. Use the two original bolts. And we have successfully, I've actually done this uh, again on something else. Like in the past, I've swapped out. So you can use Go Power Sports calipers on a lot of stuff. You just may have to remove that backing pad to bolt up. And I keep those as well because you never know when you're going to need them. All right, so we can bolt the. We got that. We're going to use the new banjo bolt and washers because the Go Power Sports ones are a little thicker and better, in my opinion. And then we can bleed this system out. Thank you, Go Power Sports, for saving the day. Because that would have sucked if I'd have ordered those. Not only would it have taken over a week to get here, finding stuff for this thing, like little pieces like this, because websites will try to say that it'll fit and it won't. So we have our new Go Power Sports caliper on there. Sick! First, I start with bleeding the line. You're holding it? You hear that there? We'll do that a couple times. That'll help get the bulk of the air out. Then I go to the bleeder. I'm telling you guys, do it this way. It'll save you so much headache. We have learned over the years how stupid we was at bleeding brakes. Um, uh, do you remember the first time? Eight it hours. took us all day and we didn't get it done. We were the like, problem is was, this possible? Yeah, we was bleeding from the bleeder, but it, our line had an air bubble trapped in it. So it didn't matter. We back purged it, everything. Yeah. Did not matter. Hold it. An entire day gone and it didn't even ever get bled correctly. No, and then like two months later, we finally cracked the line and it bled a ton of air out. We had instant breaks. It took like one try and we yeah. had it. Pump it. So, so all, yeah, learn from us. Always bleed your line at every point before bleeding the bleeder. We've already bled the master cylinder out. All right, hold it. Okay, go ahead. So we're gonna keep bleeding these two fronts and we can put it back on and she's ready to ride. We can't be hard because it does need a bump stop on the back. There's so much travel on the rear swing arm. The carb at like maximum travel will hit the frame. And I can fix that later. I can modify the frame when we take the swing arm off to paint it. But for now, Lonnie just has to be a little easier on it. He'll break it. Hold it. I thought that's what I was getting paid for. <laughs> oh, you're getting paid? Well, I mean, once we come to an agreement, I'll be <laughs> that's like, what it'll be for. I'm just like, hey, can I owe you? Can I take care of you next week? He's like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Six months deep. <laughs> Three years later, you know you owe me two point seven million dollars. <laughs> oh shoot! All right, hold it. Alrighty guys, so the Eton Rover is now ready to ride. We got the brakes all bled out. Everything's good to go on it. Things been a headache because every little thing kept messing up. Um, you know, like I said, every part we didn't replace, we had problems I love. But make sure to check out the links in the video description. You know the drill. Everything on this cart that we have linked down below, the headlights, the wiring stuff, all types of things are linked down there and all those sweet parts from Go Power Sports. And on the next episode, we'll be ripping on this thing. Well, I won't be. I made the suspension perfect for Grayson's weight and like Lonnie uh, can ride it, it's perfectly fine 
uh, but I bottom out the shocks. Like if you put it at max flex, the frame will hit the carburetor. We're gonna modify that section of the frame so it won't do that. But uh, like Lonnie can ride it as hard as he wants to and it won't hit that uh, carburetor. But make sure to check out those links. This thing's mean guys, wait till you see, way too fast for Grayson uh, for a start, like his second vehicle. But uh, you'll see how good this reverse gearbox work. We're in love with this little cart. So make sure to tune in to the video next week. And uh, we thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless. Next time on Redbeard's Garage.